Relations, Lesson 3, Domain and Range. First, we need to define what is domain and what is range. Domain is the set of all possible values for the independent variable, which is usually x. Range is a listing of all possible values for the dependent variable, which is usually y. So, review. Let's start out by sketching a solution on a number line for an inequality. Our first inequality is x is greater than 3. My first step is to label my boundary point. My boundary point is 3. You'll notice that this is shaded in. We shade it in because x can be 3. It is included in the solution set. We know this because it's got a line underneath. Next, we need to identify which way the arrow grows. Since x is greater than 3, we know that x can be any value that is bigger than 3. So I draw my arrow to the right. To test this, I could take one of my points, put it in for x, such as 4, and this would be greater than 3. Stop the tape right now and try b. Okay, so we're back to b. Again, we identify our boundary point, which is 3. Notice this is not shaded in because x is less than 3, not equal to 3. Now we figure out which way the arrow is going to go. Since x is less than 3, I draw my arrow to the numbers that are below 3. Again, I could use a test point, take 2, put it in there. Is 2 less than 3? Yes. Part C. State the solution values domain for the following number lines using set notation. What is set notation? Set notation is a way to describe a particular set of values when there are infinite possibilities in between. So you'll notice that there is a maximum, a minimum, the value is in between, and at the end we say something with x and you is a funny looking e and a funny looking r. So, the squiggly brackets signify set notation. Since we're dealing with domain, we would have an x at the beginning. Second, we use the, the funny looking e to represent is a set of. And the funny looking r is a, it represents real numbers. So, number one. When we look at number one, we notice that there is a maximum and a minimum and there is a line in between, which means we're talking about every value that occurs in between the maximum and the minimum. So I ask myself, what is my maximum value? And that is 15. My highest value is 15. Is it shaded or empty? I note that it is shaded. So that means that that point is included in my answer set. Minimum value. My lowest value is 11. Is it shaded or empty? It is empty, which means that point is not included in my solution set. So, because I'm talking about domain, I do the squiggly brackets and an X. Next, I ask myself, what is my lowest value? And that is 11. What do I know? I know that X is going to be bigger than 11, but not equal to 11 because it was empty, which means 11 is not included in the solution. What else do I know? I know that x is also going to be less than my maximum of 15. Notice how x is less than or equal to 15 because 15 is included because it was shaded. Finally, I have to state that I'm talking about every value that exists between those, so I say x is a subset of all real numbers. Stop the tape now and try number two. Looking at number two, what do I notice? I notice that I have one end and an arrow that keeps going in one direction. So, do I have a maximum value? No, there is no maximum value, which means I don't really have to worry about whether it's shaded or empty. Do I have a minimum value? Yes, my lowest value is negative 4. Since this is not shaded or empty, I know that that point is not included. So, since I'm dealing with x, 
I draw my squiggly bracket with an X and a line. Next, I know I have a minimum value of negative 4. Now, what values work here? Everything bigger than negative 4. So, I would say that X is greater than negative 4. Not equal to because it was an empty circle. Finally, I'm dealing with infinite values bigger than 4. So, I have to state that X is a subset of all real numbers. Since we have a maximum, um, we have a minimum but no maximum, we state that X is larger than a minimum but have no number above the variable. Part D, domain and range of continuous data. State the domain and range in set notation. Well, I look at my very first graph and I want to know what the domain is. Domain is the listing of all X values. Now, notice my graph goes to the edge of the grid, which means that it keeps going. If this were to keep going, the values that would be represented would keep going in both above and below. So what does that mean? That means that there is no maximum or minimum and every value that exists is part of my domain. We call this all real numbers. How do we represent this using set notation? Well, since we're talking about domain, I would do the squiggly bracket and an X with a line. Now, since there's no maximum and no minimum, all I'm left with is X is a subset of all real numbers. Range for this situation, now remember, range is my Y values. So what Y values are represented here? Well, I've got a highest value of four and it goes down and keeps going down. So what does that mean? I have a maximum of four. It looks like the graph touches four, so that means it's included, but I have no minimum. So how would I describe this using set notation? Well, first I would put a Y inside the squiggly brackets because I'm talking about range. Second, I know that my Y value is going to be less than my maximum of four. Now, because it touches four, I believe that it's going to be, Y is going to be less than or equal to four. Again, since I'm talking about uh, an infinite number of points less than four, I would have to say that Y is a subset of all real numbers. Stop the video now and try number two. Number two, what do I notice? I know that notice that I've got an enclosed ellipse. So let's start with my domain. Well, domain is a listing of the X values. So what X values are represented here? Well, that is everything between negative seven and positive seven. So I have a maximum value of seven, a minimum value of negative seven, and I'm talking about domain, so it's going to be squiggly bracket X. Now, I know that my lowest value is negative 7, my highest value is 7, so X is going to be everything in between. Because my line touches 7 and negative 7, I include those points, so it's going to be greater than or equal to negative 7, but less than or equal to positive 7. Because I'm dealing with a range of values, I have to stipulate that X is a subset of all real numbers. Finally, let's talk about range. Again, range is a listing of the Y values. So what Y values are represented here? Well, they go from the highest Y value of four to the lowest Y value of negative four. So my maximum is four, my minimum is negative 4. Since I'm dealing with Y, I put squiggly bracket Y with a line after it. Now, again, what do I know? I know that my values for Y are going to be in between negative 4 and 4. So, I know that Y is going to be greater than negative 4, but also equal to negative 4 because it looks like my line touches 4. It's going to be greater than or equal to 4 
because it looks like my mind touches four. Finally, because I'm dealing with infinite points, I have to state that y is a subset of all real numbers. Finally, domain and range of discrete data. Now remember, discrete data is ones that we would not join together in a line. It is individual points. Now, here, since we're not dealing with a range of val uh, values, we're just dealing with specific points. All we have to do is list those points. F so for domain, it's going to be a listing of the x values. So in this case, that would be negative 2, 0, 1, 3, 6. For range, it's a listing of the y values. So I would just have to list those, which would be negative 4, 0, 2, 6, and 12. Notice we do not say x is a subset of all real numbers because it's not. It is specific points. Stop the recording and try the next one. Here, what you should notice is we're dealing with a set of ordered pairs. But the point is that it's irrelevant. It's still a distinct set of discrete data. So what are my domain values? They are the first values in each ordered pair. That is 3, 5, 7, 9. What's my range? That is the second value, or y value, in each ordered pair. Now, you'll notice that there are two tens. Since range is a listing of all possible y values, we only need to mention 10 once.